What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Deals on Wheels podcast brought to you by Deals on Wheels. I'm your host, Carter Farthing, and if you didn't watch the first couple of episodes of the podcast, I definitely go recommend that you go back and watch those now. Uh, there is a little bit of a change to the studio. Uh, the background was a little bit too busy, in my opinion, in the first couple of episodes, so I went through and dumbed it down a little bit, and uh, we do have a new addition to the background, is uh, the TV, so we'll actually be able to go through and look at some pictures in real time and uh, discuss some of the uh, cars and the pictures that I've taken in the past, and uh, instead of edit, edit the edit, editing them in post-production, uh, we'll be able to just pull them up on the computer, and you'll be able to see them real time with me. Uh, hopefully we do have both of the camera angles up if you are seeing the one on the left and the one on the right uh, We did it again. So hopefully that works out and you can see everything and you can hear me just fine Like I said, this is the deals on wheels podcast and I am Carter Farthing Definitely uh, make sure that you follow us on all of all, all of our social medias uh, It's spelled at DLZ O N W L Z as you can see above me and in front of me Basically everywhere, and it's in the title, and it's in basically everywhere you can see this. So uh, make sure you follow us. Uh, click the link in the uh, description. The top of the description is dealsonwheels.com, so you can check out all of our merchandise and everything that we do sell on dealsonwheels.com. Uh, we will go a little bit uh, further in depth in the future about some of the things that we will be carrying on dealsonwheels.com in the future. Uh, but right now, we are only carrying some of the decals that we do make in-house, uh, and we all are also carrying the Sponsored Drivers Collection, which is a group of six different uh, designs. I got six different sponsees from all across the country that we actually sponsor, and we made Sponsored Drivers packs designed from their cars. Uh, they all drive modified turbo Nissans from the 90s. Uh, we have an R33 GTR, an S14 Kuki, an S13 Sylvia, uh, Z32 Fair Lady Z. We've got plenty of plenty of uh, cars that you guys will definitely like. Definitely make sure that you hit the link in the description. Uh, I will probably edit in a photo of what the sponsored drivers uh, packs look like above me here. Uh, but 10% of every sale, oh, excuse me, 20% of every sale actually does go back to the sponsored drivers themselves. So every time that you buy one of the packs, $5 goes straight towards the sponsored drivers' cars. Um, each pack includes two air fresheners, oh no, excuse me, two stickers, one air freshener, and an enamel pin that's limited to 100 of each unit. Uh, if you'll see on the enamel pins, uh, actually I don't have any in front of me here. Uh, but the enamel pins are super cool. They come on uh, business cards. They're on uh, little pieces that you can use as collector's cards as well and put them in your wallet when you're done with them. It has the, the name of the car and the Instagram handle of the owner's car on there as well. Uh, so if, if you are interested in supporting some people that uh, are in the car community and support Deals on Wheels, definitely make sure that you check the sponsored driver's collections out at the top of the description. Um, I definitely want to support the people that support Deals on Wheels, so that's probably the easiest way to do so. Uh, our six drivers are an amazing group of guys who have been with me since the beginning. Uh, they don't work for Deals on Wheels. They are just representative of the company. They all rock stickers and all of our apparel and accessories on their cars. Uh, two of our drivers are down in Texas. Uh, two of them are pretty local to me in the Washington State area. Uh, one's up in Canada, and then there's one in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's all of their information on the website as well. There's some uh, bios and descriptions written on the uh, the descriptions of the sponsored drivers packs where you can actually read about the drivers and more about their cars. So definitely head uh, to dealsonwheels.com and check out the sponsored drivers collection if you want to support us and support our drivers. Okay, so now that uh, some bills are paid, actually... Uh, before we get into something else, uh, if you are familiar, Deals on Wheels used to sell these uh, Nismo key blanks. Uh, they are remanufactured units of the heritage keys made by Nismo and made by Nissan in the 90s. Um, and I actually sold out of the Nismo inspired keys a couple of months ago, but you guys have been asking for another version of the keys. So I took another fan favorite, which was the uh, the Playboy 
inspired key uh, that was made in the 90s. Uh, Deals on Wheels is now producing and manufacturing our own uh, Playboy keys called the Gentleman's Key. Uh, it's perfect for all of your S chassis and R chassis or basically any Nissan from the 90s. Uh, you'll be able to cut and uh, use this key on your car. Uh, they're not available yet. They will be available on the website soon. Uh, I did post a couple in-depth pictures on the Instagram. Make sure that you follow our Instagram for all up to, uh, for all updates on all of our merchandise. Um, but uh, those aren't available yet. Definitely make sure to uh, hold on for those. Um, that's all I have to mention about the keys. I am super excited about them. I've been working on uh, getting them produced for... I'd say since about January. Um, and now this was the prototype that came in the mail about a week ago. I took some uh, product photos of it and uploaded onto Instagram. Uh, but this is just the prototype. But we will have the full order, a couple hundred of them that will be here shortly, uh, within a couple of weeks, I believe. Um, another thing I wanted to mention before we get into the uh, probably the reason you clicked on this video, the title, uh, the whole... I've had 100 cars before I turned 21 thing. Um, I just wanted to mention that we also do have the t-shirts for sale by Deals on Wheels. Uh, sorry for all of the advertisements. I do have to pay some bills around here. Uh, but the Busted Knuckles baseball uh, design is available on the website. Uh, I'll probably throw a picture up above me as well. Uh, but it is a, a baseball tee that has the Deals on Wheels old logo on the front left breast area. And then the Busted uh, Knuckles design, which you guys will see. Actually, uh, the Busted Knuckles design is the intro to all the podcasts. It's the, the Knuckles with the Deals on Wheels going through and then the wrench and the katana. Uh, the Busted Knuckles design is on the back of the t-shirt. And then uh, each t-shirt comes with a Deals on Wheels old logo sticker and a Busted no Knuckles sticker as well to put on your car. So you'll be able to have the same designs that you have on your t-shirt uh, on your car as well. So you'll be able to represent Deals on Wheels basically everywhere you go uh okay thank you all for listening to uh my advertisements and listening to some of the things that we have for sale on deals on wheels coming up in the future um i guess let's dig into the meat and potatoes of this episode and that would be cars uh you can see above me this is the uh the s13 that we talked about in the very first episode of the deals on wheels podcast this is the one that i bought for about two thousand dollars I think 22 or 2300 bucks I ended up paying for this one. Uh, but I ended up picking it up from one of the employees at Right Hand Drive Specialties, uh, which is an importer here based in Washington. Uh, they don't have the best record, uh, apparently, to all the kids online. But also, the people that are talking shit usually have the loudest voices. And the people that are happy with their, uh, their cars and their experience usually just ride off into the sunset and never have anything to say. So I'm not here to be the judge, jury, or executioner on right-hand drive specialties, but it is my duty to tell you that there have been some stories, and there is a Facebook group, I think, with like thirteen or 14,000 members with uh, people talking about their experiences with right-hand drive specialties. So definitely be wary before dropping thirty or $40,000 on a car from the 90s. Um, but anyway, uh, I ended up buying this S13 for 22 or 2300 bucks, and I brought it home and got it onto some Sentra SER wheels. Uh, these wheels, I think I got them off of a 2003 or 2004 Nissan Sentra SER uh, because they are 4x1, 14.3 wheels, and they, I mean, they're the right offset, they're the right center bore. Uh, they're a little bit cheaper, and I just didn't want to rock ugly stock wheels anymore. So I gave them a little bit of a paint job. Uh, you can see in the first picture here, they were gray. I think they're gunmetal gray from factory, but I went ahead and stripped them down and painted them white. Uh, they definitely looked good on the black car. Um, after that, we got the, I know I talked earlier uh, on the first podcast about ending up painting this car white and getting it on the gold XXR 527 wheels. Um, before that, the car was still black. And you can see here, uh, I'm actually at the track here with my dad. My dad had the, the 91 NA Miata 1.6 liter. Um, it looks like it's slammed on the ground, though. It's actually on some Honda LS webs off of a Acura Integra um, or a Civic Si. What the? 
what do LS webs come off of? Definitely an Acura. Definitely an Integra, right? I don't know. Not a Honda guy anymore. Um, but my dad had this Miata slammed on its nuts, white hardtop. Uh, he ended up, oh my God, this was, okay, so this is 2017 or 2018, uh, probably the end of 2017, before everything got nuts in the drift community. Uh, that hardtop my dad got, it was never ever installed on a car someone bought it brand new in 1991 as a dealer option for their na miata and put it in their roof or their their uh their not their attic yeah their attic or crawl space above their garage uh and it was actually wrapped in cellophane and my dad bought it on craigslist for 250 dollars cash Bra- literally a brand new with defrost mazda hardtop for his miata white literally brand new condition never put on a car for 250 bucks. Imagine that. I mean, seriously, in 2020 or 2021, that hardtop's probably worth 17 to $2,000 because it's brand new condition with defrost. Um, and it's an incredible deal, literally 10 times the value in the last four years. Um, so anyone that had a garage full of uh, Miata hardtops, good on you. Um, eventually after I did get the, uh, the, the 240 where I wanted it, uh, it had the welded diff, it had the XXR 527s, it had PBM coilovers on it. Uh, I got into a different chassis. I bought my very first Toyota Cressida, the MX73 chassis, I believe. Uh, this one was pretty clapped out. Uh, you can see the, actually, this is before I painted the wheels on the, the S13, but, uh, there's the Cressida and the, the 240 there together. Um, I, I eventually put the, actually, you can see here, I put the Cressida on some 2000, actually, the stock wheels off of my 2005 Mustang GT. Let's see if there's a better picture. Yeah, here we go. Uh, those are actually stock 05 Mustang GT wheels, and they don't look terrible. I think when I got the car, let's see if there's a, oh, wait, on this picture, uh, it had some Lexus IS 250 wheels on it, some pretty ugly I think 18 by seven and a half. So you can see that I have some pretty massive fender gap there. Uh, but I stepped it up to the, I think these were 18 by nine, 18 by eight and a half, 18, 18 by something. They're a little bit wider, the stock Mustang wheels. So they fit the fender gap a little bit well, uh, better. Definitely made the car look good. Um, actually this car, the very first MX 73 I ever got was factory five speed. Uh, it's very, very, very rare to uh to find one of these in manual transmission uh actually the cool thing about these toyota cressidas i if you aren't into drifting or anything like that you probably won't be able to tell by the picture but this it was a drift car it was rear wheel drive it had a straight six in it i think the engine's called the 7m 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 i think it's the 7m uh, and they are garbage. They are boat anchors. They make 75 horsepower on a good day. And uh, But it, it was a rear-wheel drive chassis, and it had a five-speed. It was a five-speed transmission. So I drifted the car. It had a welded diff as well. It had straight pipe. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for this car or how I even got it. How did I get this? Anyways, um, I ev- eventually ended up blowing the W57 transmission that was in it because... Uh, I drifted it for, I mean, months straight. This was my daily driver because while I still had the 240, that was basically just my, my fun car. I would drive it when I wanted to have fun. This one was my daily drifter. So I would get in it and drive it every day and kick it around corners. Uh, but eventually I blew up the transmission and traded it for this beauty, which I think was one year newer, but it was an automatic chassis. But as you can see from the pictures, this thing was st- straight. I mean, straight, straight, straight. There wasn't a dent on it. It had, uh, I think an Apple, Apple CarPlay head unit in it. It had the tents. It had, as you can see, the IS 300, uh, wheels on it. I think it had on these MX 73s, you can actually put, uh, I don't know if it's S 13 or S 14 lowering springs in these, uh, in these shocks, you can take the, the springs off of the original shocks and throw some S3. I think they're S14 lowering springs. Uh, and that's how I got this car so low. It wasn't on coilovers or anything. It was literally just on S14 lowering springs. Uh, there's the front of the car. You can see how 
how low that front end is. It, it was a little bit bouncy, but for an automatic daily, it was fine. Um, this is the 240 after I painted it. It was white at this point. It's got the, the bloody teeth on the, the front bash bar. You can see the gold XXR 527s up front. Got the baller hood pins from O'Reilly's $1.99 special. Oh, you can actually see the, the garage sideways banner. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, the garage sideways banner that, uh, came out in early 2017, uh, when Steven just started garage sideways and, uh, he put those out. I think I was one of the first people to buy one. Uh, but eventually that car kind of took a turn for the worst and got turned into just a straight drift slut. So you can see it here, pretty sticker bombed up. Um, and then after, after that automatic Cressida, I ended up buying this yellow Honda Prelude. Um, actually, this is a pretty fun lineup. Uh, my S13 and my Prelude, and then my dad's Miata, and he also had a AP1 S2000. Uh, we, he had a hardtop for that one as well. So he had the, the hardtop Miata convertible and the hardtop S2000 convertible at the same time. So kind of a flex. Um, but I ended up buying this, this yellow Prelude off of, uh, offer up or Craigslist for 300 bucks cash. Um, I ended up putting it on a trailer and trailering it home because I, I think the guy said it needed a radiator or something, but when we got it home, it literally just didn't have a lower hose on the radiator. Uh, so I threw a lower hose on it and it never overheated again. Um, I, I got that thing bone stock and I obviously wanted to make it cool for as cheap as I wanted or as cheap as I could. It's kind of the whole theme of, uh, my life, but, uh, I got the car for 300 bucks, got it home, got it running just fine. And I, I cut the springs on it. Yeah. I, I took the original springs and I cut, I think 75 or 80% of the spring off, leaving me with about this much suspension. And, uh, it was on the, it's, uh, it was on its nuts. And, uh, I think I see, I can't really tell what wheels were on it, but I, I put some aftermarket wheels on it. Uh, but eventually I, so you'll see my crown Vic behind me, but I took the, the prelude and it was so low. I was driving it, uh, to high school one day and I hit a, a, uh, a manhole cover in the middle of the road and hit my oil pan and literally sheared the entire bottom of the oil pan off of the car. I mean, it, the open, the, the bottom of the oil pan opened like a, uh, a can of beans or something. Uh, so I mean, that car had to go. I traded it straight across for this 04 or 02, 02. 02, 03, 04, something like that. Uh, Crown Victoria police and interceptor with the, the dual cam V8, the 4.6 liter. Uh, it was definitely a fun car. I think I owned this car for about 48 hours before trading it for bump, but a bomb, a uh, black EK sedan. Oh, black EK coupe. Uh, it was manual. It was a uh, five speed dual cam. Uh, no single cam D 16, uh, junk. It was just a, Fun little car, but I was still in it only like 500 bucks or something uh, because obviously I traded the Prelude for the Crown Vic and then traded the Crown Vic straight across for the Civic. So I'm in the Civic super cheap and then <sighs> something terrible happens. Um, I'm on the way up to actually see my girlfriend and her little sisters up at the park and uh, I'm driving up 410 in Bonnie Lake and uh, I'm sitting at a red light. And I get hit by a uh, Kia Sorento, uh, Kia Sedona, some kind of Kia minivan. Uh, and it pushes me into uh, another car. So this Honda Civic got smushed at both ends. Um, and then the Kia Sedona that hit me put it in reverse, got in the right lane, and tried to speed off. Uh, I luckily got out of the car. And you could see, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you could see... The imprint of the front license plate of the Kia Sedona imprinted onto the back of the Civic. So I promptly called 911 and uh, actually followed the police officer to the house of the person uh, that hit me and ran because she lived six blocks away. So it was actually pretty easy to track her down. And when we got to her house, the front end of her Kia Sedona was basically falling off at that point. Uh, so we sued her for hit and run or, uh, my insurance went after her for fleeing the scene of an accident. And I ended up getting like 2,500 bucks cash for this Honda Civic that I was in like 500 bucks. 
So I quintupled my money by getting hit by this car. Um, I no peeking. I know you saw that, uh, but I got twenty five hundred bucks. Uh, quintupled my money. I had a good chunk of change in my pocket. So, what was a young blood to do besides pick up a two forty project? But not just any two forty project. A black slick top nineteen ninety S thirteen coupe. For 300 bucks cash, 300 bucks cash, 300 bucks cash. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back. 300 bucks cash for this black S13 coupe. If you were to buy this car, and I know you can see that the fender's crumpled and the, and the bumper's falling off. If you were to see this car on Craigslist right now with no title, no engine, needs suspension work, needs an interior, this is a $2,500 car all day long. So it's pretty crazy to think that I... Rolled up to this guy and uh, saw this thing, gave him 300 bucks cash, and he delivered it to my house. Uh, I think I found it in Auburn. Um, you can see my Subaru parked there behind it. I had a 07 Legacy GT, the turbo version. Pretty fun car. Uh, but I had the, I bought this S13 as a project. Uh, actually, oh my god. So I can see in the for sale sign that it says 1500 bucks. Uh, in the in the on the on the sign. So this guy was originally asking fifteen hundred bucks, and I have no idea how, but I guess I talked him down to three hundred bucks cash because I vividly remember buying this car for three hundred bucks cash and having him deliver it to me. Um, <clears throat> wow, that was a fun voice crack. Let's go ahead and dr- take a water break. If you are not subscribed to the Deals on Wheels prod or YouTube channel, definitely make sure you do that now. All right, back to the 240. Um, so I paid 300 bucks for this thing. It was kind of a hoopty. Uh, you can see here, uh, I put a pig nose front bumper on it. I got some new fenders for it. Uh, I replaced the front windshield because there was a, a fist sized hole in the, the windshield when I bought it. I actually don't think that I have a picture of the broken windshield, but you can see the tape, uh, on this new one from where I replaced it. Um, but I also ended up getting the wide body rear fenders, uh, the R32 Skyline rear wing. Uh, I got some KBD polyurethane side skirts. You can see them here. Um, the polyurethane side skirts, um, opposed to the fiberglass side skirts that are, are usually put on drift cars. Uh, the fiberglass ones tend to snap and break, uh, as, these polyurethane ones are actually made with a uh, rubber material that you can actually bend and actually run over uh, these side skirts. Uh, KBD is notorious for actually having people fly, have their parts fly off on track and be run over by drift cars and still be able to throw them back on your car after a couple of laps because that's how durable they are. They Actually, the side skirt, when I bought it, came in a box, no joke, probably – As big as this iPad. It was this big and I opened it up and the side skirts flew out of the box and I let them sit in the sun for a couple hours and they unfolded and turned into some beautiful side skirts. So definitely a shout out to KBD for making a fantastic product. Uh, I definitely look forward to using their products in the future. Uh, I know that they make wide body kits and full, full body kits for a plethora of different cars now. So Shout out to KBD. Uh, you can also see that I've got the 50-50 taillights on there now. I've also got the, uh, yeah, I got the vented front fenders. Uh, you can also see I got the PBM coilovers. Uh, I got some, I got some junk wheels. I think these are some MSRs that I got, f- got off of eBay for like 500 bucks for all four of them brand new. Uh, but they were good offset. I think they were like 15 by eight and a half. Uh, like plus 15 or something. So they, they fit the car pretty well since it had uh, over fenders on it and everything. Uh, but the car looked good at this state. It basically had a full body kit on it. I had a front and rear bumper sitting waiting for it. Uh, and I got some NRG bucket seats, as you can see. Um, and I can't remember what wheel. I- oh, I had an S15. Uh, Jesus Christ. This is another thing. I had an S15 Spec S steering wheel, the perforated leather one uh, that has the Sylvia S in the middle horn button. Uh, and I paid literally $20 on offer up for that steering wheel when at this point it's probably a $250 steering wheel on offer up or Craigslist at this point. Uh, but this car was 
sick at this point. I mean, it had the bucket seats. It had the the interior was pretty nice. I mean, it was a complete interior, which is hard to find in 240s these days. It was a, had the body kit on there. Uh, but when I did buy the car, it was uh, a shell, obviously. It didn't have a motor or a transmission or uh, anything like that in it. It did have a differential in it, and I it didn't have a drive shaft. I had to piece together a drive shaft. Um, but this is a picture of me and my buddy Caleb uh, put in the first single cam in there. It's the KA24E, uh, which is, uh, as I mentioned in the first episode, is the smaller version of the 240 engine that came in the USDM models. Uh, USDM standing for the United States domestic market, uh, opposed to the JDM, Japanese domestic market, that came with the uh, the turbo version, the SR20 DET, which is... 10 times better motor. Um, you can see here that I eventually did go through and paint the engine bay uh, silver. And uh, I got the the single cam in there all wired up, ready to go. And this uh, motor ended up having rod knock and blowing up as soon as I turned it over. Uh, that happened twice in a row. And this car never left the garage. Uh, I mentioned that a couple times. And the whole thing about the car coming into the garage, because this is actually the same garage that I'm working out of now that I built this car. I'm actually staring at the spot where the car used to sit. Um, but yeah, I got two different motors in here. They both ended up getting rod knock, and I was thousands of dollars into two different single cam swaps at this point when I should have just balled out and put an SR20 in this thing, which in all reality, if I would have put an SR in this car, I probably would have never sold it, and I would be... Drifting my black 91 S13 coupe with an SR in it, wide body, energy. Fuck, if I, w if I would have still had that car, things would be different. Things would be different. I, I promise you things would be different. Um, but yeah, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into this car for it to never go anywhere. Uh, I think I eventually sold it uh, with a, a rod knocked single cam in it to someone for 3200 bucks, which wasn't a a terrible deal. I still got some money for it. Um, which leads me to the IS 300. The night. No, I think I have it written down somewhere. I don't remember what year the IS 300 was. Bum, 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 bum. 2005. It was a 2005 IS 300. This one was factory manual. Factory manual IS 300s like the Cressidas are extremely, extremely, extremely hard to come by. And when you do come by them, they're usually beat to shit, just like this one. Uh, like I said, it was a 2005. Uh, it was previously owned by not my good friend, but a buddy of mine named Devin, who I went to high school with. And he had this for a couple of years. It had a, a BN kit on it. It's, you can see it in this picture. It's got the BN kit on there. It was nev never mocked up correctly when he owned it. Uh, but when I bought it from him, it did have a blown head gasket, so it did have to get towed to my house. But I think I paid 1200 bucks cash for this car, which is absolutely ridiculous because, I mean, a blown head gasket manual BN kit IS300 today would reach at least 42, 43, 44, 4500 bucks um, on a good day. I mean, on the low end, probably a 35 to $3,000 car for a blown up uh, IS300 that needs a motor, especially a black. I mean, this one had the black leather interior too. I mean, it was a beautiful car. Uh, I eventually got the kit mounted on there correctly and I sent this car. This was the first car that I wanted done correctly. I mean, I, I had tried my hand at swapping the S13s a couple of times and I, like I've said in the past, I am by no means a professional mechanic or someone that claims to be a mechanic, but I can turn a wrench. So I, I attempted those couple of swaps. It never went well for me, so I kind of had a sour taste in my mouth. Uh, but this IS300, I, I wanted it to be different. So I, I had the money from selling the S13 coupe in my pocket, a little bit over three grand. So I spent 1200 bucks on this car. I ended up uh, getting a full head gasket or upper end rebuild kit for the 2J. It was a non-turbo NA 2J, the 2JZ GE uh, that comes in all of these IS300s. But 
I uh, sent the car up to a local mechanic. A lot of you guys may be familiar with him, Spencer Bolte. Uh, he's got a bunch of S13s. He just bought an R34 sedan. Um, he's a, pretty much a local legend around here. And uh, he ended up doing the full rebuild on the upper end of the 2J, uh, doing the head gasket kit and getting it timed and everything. And then I had I had a black IS300 manual with a BN kit. Uh, I don't think it had any suspension mods or anything at this point. Uh, but you can see my daily driver, uh, 07 Legacy GT, uh, the turbo Subaru that I daily drove for like the junior and senior year of high school. And then you can see the IS300. And they both had my red Supreme banners on them because I was hot shit, obviously. Um, but that IS300, oh no, oh no, oh no, no, no. Um, that IS300 lasted about, I think two months um, from start to finish. I think I drove it for like two days before I sent it up to uh, Spencer to get rebuilt. And then uh, he had it for about a month, not a month, probably three weeks. And then I ended up driving it. Uh, this was when I still worked at Zoomies. Uh, I drove it to and from Zoomies every once in a while, but I, I obviously had the Subaru, so I wasn't daily driving it. <clears throat> Another water break. I'm not going to be squeaking this entire episode. But uh, I had the IS300 up and running. It was a perfect car. And uh, then disaster ensues. I spent – I was in this car at least over three grand at this point getting it rebuilt. And uh, I painted the fenders and got the, the body kit all mounted up. Um, it was a good-looking car. I spent some decent time and money on it to – make it look like this and make it a good daily driver. Um, but then eventually, I don't know, I don't have it in the slideshow because it's a video, I think. Uh, but I was sitting in the the line right behind Dylan at base Dilly. Um, I love you, Dylan. Dylan Thomas, uh, if you're watching. And uh, anyways, I was sitting behind Dylan in the line for Stance Wars. And oh my God, how did this even happen? Oh, we were just sitting in line and the line wasn't moving for about 15 minutes. Uh, so I step out of the car and the car's still running. All of our cars are still running and I'm sitting and, uh, bullshitting with everyone in the line, just talking to Dylan, talking to the kid behind me, just talking about cars, smoking cigarettes, talking, just standing there, not paying attention. And then eventually I see a little bit of not steam coming from under the hood, but, uh, you know how you can see the the ripples of heat coming out from under the hood, so I, and a little bit of the smell. I s obviously could tell that the IS three hundred was overheating at this point, uh, but I didn't realize that it, it had been absolutely fucking pegged on uh, the red all the way to the right on overheating for about ten minutes now, and it had just been sitting there with no airflow or anything. Uh, so I I turned the car off. Uh, probably not the best idea, especially for where I was and. Uh, Oh my god, this went really bad. Uh, so I, I turned the car off. It had obviously been overheating for about 10 minutes, so the, it was just pegged. I opened the hood, and you could just see through the, the coolant overflow reservoir that the coolant was fucking boiling. It was, I could see, li it, it was literally boiling. It was on fire. <laughs> um, so I let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then uh, about 10 minutes later, the line started moving, and I wanted to add a little bit of water. Some people came and, uh, cause a bunch of the water like steamed over, uh, once the car cooled down. And, uh, I opened the coolant reservoir or no, I opened the, the radiator and about 10 gallons of condensed smoke and coolant and everything just fucking push out of the top of the radiator and just, it's a geyser of coolant. And I remember. There was a M4, M5, a newer BMW uh, that was wrapped in like a chameleon wrap job that was behind me. And there was just fucking coolant spraying everywhere all over the line. Um, so this thing, I mean, I knew it was a goner. It had to have cracked the block uh, at some point or maybe the crack was already blocked or the, the block was already cracked from the previous owner. Because, I mean, that car went through the through some shit and it obviously overheated a bunch uh, it had the blown head gasket, but it may not have even been a blown head gasket from the beginning. It may have been a crack in the cylinder wall in one of the coolant jets or coolant jackets, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the, in the cylinder head itself or the, 
the block of the engine, letting coolant into the cylinder, letting it overheat. Anyways, the car overheated, and uh, I let it cool off, the big geyser of coolant, and then uh, about 25 minutes later, the car had completely cooled down. I could touch the radiator with my hand, and uh, oh, this is why I start. Okay, so I, w- I wasn't even going to go into Stance Wars. I was going to park the car kind of next to the line because I was – in, initially, I was going to go into Stance Wars, which is why I was waiting in line. But at this point, I just kind of wanted to park the car and walk inside. Um, but I get a call from my manager at Zoomies, and this is Sunday. Uh, I usually don't work Sundays, but apparently I had been put on the schedule to work this specific Sunday. Um, so I get a call from my manager, where are you? What do you mean? Uh, I'm at Stance Wars, and I'm kind of dealing with my blown up IS-300 at this point. Uh, so she tells me to get my ass to work about 25 minutes ago. Uh, so I get into this overheated IS 300 and I turn it on and I have to drive about 25 minutes to the South Hill mall because, uh, Stance Wars was at, uh, I think, oh yeah, it was at Wild Waves in, uh, Federal Way in Washington. So it was about 25 minutes from the South Hill mall. Uh, so I get into the IS 300 and I start it up. Clunk, 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 clunk. That's the sound of it running. So I obviously blew a fucking rod or two. So I turned it up. Clunk, 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 clunk. Okay, so I have to get to work now. So I drive 25 minutes without a care in the world. Because at this point, I knew the motor was blown up. And I drive all the fucking way to the South Hill Mall. I mean, five five seconds after starting the car, it noticeably overheats. And I drive like that for another 25 minutes. So by the time that I pull into the South Hill Mall, already about an hour late for my shift, uh, my IS-300 that I spent all of my money building and getting to this point uh, was basically a paperweight with a, a motor that would never start again. I mean, at this point, by the time that I pulled into the South Hill Mall, I wasn't stopping at stop signs. I wasn't stopping at red lights. I was coasting through everything because if I would were to stop and let the car attempt to idle, it would absolutely die. And I know I wasn't going to be able to start it again. Uh, so when I pulled into the South Hill Mall, I turned it off. Well, I let the car die and uh, I get out. I lock the car and uh, I go and work my six or seven hour shift. And I know that when I go out to the car, it's it's not going to start. Uh, so I go out on my lunch break and I – no, I don't – no, that's right. I go out on my lunch break and I see if the car is even going to turn over. And the cylinder walls are basically melted to themselves at this point because, I mean, the car's just – the engine seized because it overheated so bad. So the motor's a goner. So I had my dad actually come and tow the car home while I was at work, and then he ended up picking me up later. So that was the end of the IS-300. Um, I don't remember... Excuse me. I don't remember what I did with the... What did I do with that car? I don't think... I don't, I don't remember. I don't know if I lost... I definitely lost money, but I don't remember how much money I lost on it. Probably around three grand. And then we have another thing. This one was... A disaster, uh, but it was my fault. Let me get into that. This is a 1998 BMW E36 318 Ti. It's the compact version. So if you notice, regular E36s have a trunk. This one had a uh, what are those called? Like a lift gate? It was terrible, absolutely terrible. But this one had been rear-ended. Uh, I think someone uh, spun out and hit a pole or something. So I got this one on Facebook uh, for 150 bucks. 150 bucks for this car. It had 120,000 miles. It was rear wheel drive. It had a four cylinder engine. It was manual five speed. Uh, and I welded the diff in it. Uh, let's see if I have some more pictures. Okay, so yeah, it, it had a, a little bit of damage up front. The hood didn't fit properly. Um, but I eventually. Got some Miglia 1000s, which are some pretty crazy, not rare, but crazy, hard to find uh, Italian wheels. And uh, got some coilovers, got an angled kit, and cut the fucking roof off. Uh, If you can tell from this picture, I took everything 
from the B pillar back and cut it off. So I present to you the Beamer truck. It was terrible. I was in it less than 500 bucks uh, with the coilovers, the car, the wheels, and the $25 angle kit that I got off of eBay. And uh, I drifted this thing once or twice. Uh, but, you know, I, I kind of forgot the whole roll cage and the whole structural structural rigidity aspect of uh, cars. So the whole welded diff and whole whipping the rear end around thing kind of kind of kind of bent the rear end a lot. <laughs> um, so it didn't really look straight from the rear after a couple of not events. I, I, I never drove this thing to the track. I drove it to high school a couple times. I drove it to a couple. Uh, I drove it to the skate park. I drove it. Drove it to my high school car show uh, when I was the president of the the Viking Motorsports Club at Puyallup High School. I actually drove this thing on the street with no title or registration or anything uh, to school uh, for the car show. And it was the ugliest car at the show by far because it was a Beamer truck. Okay, I'm not going to make you look at that any longer. Oh, look, another 240. Uh, but this one, as you can see, uh, caught a Ford Ranger to the quarter panel. Uh, luckily, this one, uh, so I bought this car for 1200 bucks off of OfferUp uh, because of the quarter panel damage. Uh, this one was factory five-speed as well. It had a dual cam uh, KA, so this one was a 1991 version. Uh, it was pretty stock. I think it had a hundred and less, like 105,000 miles on it. Uh, it was a pop-up front end, but it since it was the uh, the dual cam, it had the shark nose bumper, so it, it had the ugly bumper. Oh, actually, you can see the shark nose bumper in this picture. Um, but I, while I had the uh, this S13, this is actually right after graduation. I think this would have been uh, June or July of 2018. Because I don't think I even had my license at this point. Um, I got my license suspended for about six months during my senior year uh, for not racing, but uh, going a little bit too fast on public roads. Uh, but yeah, this was while I didn't have my license. So I was building pretty much everyone's dream setup to have a drift slut and uh, have a, a tow rig to tow it with. Uh, this was my 07 Dodge Ram 1500 with the 5.7 liter baby Hemi or something like that. I'm not really a truck guy, so I think it had something like that. It was a pretty cool truck. I think I paid 2,500 bucks cash for this car or this truck, which is pretty insane. Uh, cause I mean, even in today's market, this would be a six or $7,000 truck. Uh, even being a gasser, it's a pretty good looking truck. Um, but eventually I took that 240 that I bought for 1200 bucks and Obviously, this is the side without quarter panel damage, but uh, I swapped the knuckles – or no, I swapped the uh, the hubs out. Uh, as you can see, I put some new wheels on it, and these are our five lug like I did with a couple of the, the 240s I talked about in the last episode. Uh, I converted this one from four lug to five lug to kind of widen the, uh, the choice of wheels that I had for this thing. Uh, I started off with some MB battles that I had uh, laying around. These – so the MB battle, um, I don't know what MB stands for, but MB was kind of like a, a Les Schwab, kind of like a, a, a replica wheel manufacturer in the early 2000s uh, that would be sold at Les Schwab or Discount Tire or something like that. But they made a wheel called the Battle. And if you are a drifter from the last couple of years, you probably are familiar with the Battle because they no longer exist and they are the only fake wheel that people will ever ask $1,500 for without tires. Uh, these were originally, I think, were 500 or 600 bucks off of the MB Battles website. And they have been discontinued since, I think, 2014 or 2000. No, 2015 or 2016. Um, and yeah, they're a good wheel. They're just fake. They're a, a remanufactured version of the, the work, not... T7Rs, the brother to the work T7R. Anyway, it's a fake wheel. It looks good. Uh, I ended up eventually putting uh, the pig nose. Uh, this is a blurry picture. 
Uh, but you can see I have the the pig nose front bumper on the 240 now. I put it on some coilovers. Uh, at this point, it's not wide body yet, uh, but it's got the pig nose front bumper. It's got the clear front marker lights. It's got the pig nose lip. Uh, you can't really see the wheels in this picture. Uh, this is a little bit better of a picture. Uh, this was when Twitter was still relevant, and uh, this car got a little bit of attention. Uh, but it's got the TE37 SL replicas on it, which are the, the big six-spoke. This is a little bit better picture, too. The six-spoke deep-dish wheels uh, that uh, – they were replicas, but they were cheap. I think I got those brand new off of eBay for like 600, 600 bucks shipped. And they obviously fit the f car fucking perfect. Uh, at this point, you can see that I put some rear wide body fend or wide body rear fenders on the back of the car because you could see from the first picture that the quarter panel is completely smushed in. Uh, like I said, it caught a, uh, a Ford Ranger to the quarter panel, so it was a little banged up. Uh, but I eventually swapped out uh, the ride uh, wide body of rear quarter panels this is how the car started uh this is actually the picture from the offer up ad uh asking for 1200 bucks or i think they were asking for 1500 i ended up driving the car home for 1200 bucks uh but it had steelies it was complete i mean completely bone stock uh you can see it's got a hubcap up front but no hubcap hubcap in the back um yeah, it was a good car, and I made it go from looking like this to looking like this, wide body, five lug. Um, I think it also had uh, R32 Skyline driver seats, and uh, yeah, that was a good car. I actually have it written down. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so I bought that car for $1,200, and all of the modifications were uh, came out to 850 bucks. So I was in that car just over two grand and I ended up selling it for 4,700 bucks cash. So I was able to have fun, make some content and make a cool looking car and make some money off of it, which is kind of just the, uh, the whole idea behind deals on wheels. Uh, eventually, uh, I did have the car exactly where I wanted it to be. Um, excuse me if you can hear the rain above me. Um, I don't know how annoying that's going to be. Um, I'm going to keep going, though, because I need this episode to go out this weekend. So uh, if you can hear the rain above me, I apologize. But uh, I'm going to keep going. Uh, this is the uh, the 240 and the truck once they were kind of finished. Uh, the car was wide body. It had the front pig nose uh, with the pig nose lip. It had the TE37 reps on there. And uh, the car was ready to go. Uh, and then... I got tired of uh, not being able to drive my truck and I wanted another cool car to look at. So I traded the uh, 07 Ram 1500 for a 1997 Lexus SC300 with a factory manual five-speed transmission in it. Uh, this was a really, really fucking cool car uh, because the SC300 didn't come factory manual a lot. I think literally 3% of them made in the United States were five-speed. Um, and I've always wanted one because in this picture you can see my 97 uh, SC300 and my grandma's 97 SC300 that she bought brand new, uh, specced it out off of the showroom floor. It had the black leather interior. She literally went into Lexus in 1997 and optioned this thing out to the T. She built it herself, got the right wheels, got the right interior, got the right CD changer and literally built this thing from scratch. Uh, and I grew up with her owning and driving a, a cherry red SC300, uh, which was pretty fucking cool. So I ended up with the black one and uh, I ended up throwing a body kit on it. Uh, you can see I threw some blast pipes on there because uh, the SC300 did have a dual rear exhaust, which is pretty cool from the factory. Uh, I had the rear roof wing on there. You can see that it's tinted. It's got the, uh, I think these are, what kind of side skirts are these? I think they're cheap. Uh, I can't remember what they are. Uh, but the side skirts, and then I got the uh, the front bumper. Uh, and the, the wheels on there, you can see, are the Work CR2Ps, which are the two-piece version of the Work uh, Ko Kiwamis, I think? No, not the... The CR Kais. Uh, the Work CR Kais are the one-piece monoblock version of the Work CR2Ps, 
Um, if you don't speak wheel, I'm sorry for the gibberish, but these were a pretty expensive set of wheels. I ended up selling them for, I think, two grand and then throwing this thing on... Oh, I don't have a picture. But this car eventually ended up on some gold uh, MB battles, similar to the, the white ones that I had on the 240. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this was a good-looking car. You can see the roof wing and the, the blast pipes on there. These are actually some beautiful wheels. I, I'd love to get another set of these wheels eventually. Um, but I sold... Let's refer to the notes here. Um, I sold the SC300 for $6,500 cash. And uh, with that $6,500, I went and bought this uh, 350Z. I bought a, a 350Z drift slut with, I think, uh, it had some junk coilovers on it. I think it had the first iteration of the GK Tech angle kit. Uh, it had the first iteration of the KBD body kit. You can see with the front lip and the, uh, the side skirt there. Uh, it was a pretty basic uh, 350Z build. It was owned by uh, Russell Snow, which is a, a local guy around Puyallup. If you're in the 253 area, he runs uh, suspects, uh, the real suspects, not the fake ones that have been running around. Uh, anyways, uh, so I bought that, I think, for less than three grand, which is, again, crazy by this market. Oh, so actually, let's see. Actually, I don't know how much I paid for that Z, but I think it was less than three grand. Um, it was a good car. It had a welded diff. Uh, it was a drift car. I mean, I, I think I only put like 200 miles on it in the time that I owned it uh, because I had this, which if you know anything about me or have seen the first couple of episodes, the 1994 Honda Accord wagon, I have a, a sweet spot in my heart for because, well, well, look at it. It's... It's glorious. Let me scoot back here. Uh, but this one that I bought uh, had limo tints. Uh, it was all... This one had been painted. Uh, it was originally a white car, but this one had been gone through and repainted white. So it had a pretty good paint job on it. Uh, and then I threw these Work VS XX wheels on it. I think they were 17 by... 17 by 8.5 and, and 17 by 9. Uh, they were still in pretty fucking good condition for being 20 year old wheels. Uh, that was my, I think my s second or third, uh, set of three piece wheels. Uh, and then you can see we're in the garage that we're in now, but I had the, the Accord wagon, the 350 Z, and then my Mustang that I'm building right now. Actually, this is during the build process. You can see that it doesn't have the front end on it right now. Uh, but yeah, I had all three cars at one time. I had the Accord Wagon, the 350Z, and the 05 Mustang GT. Uh, here's another shot of them. Uh, I eventually swapped the front grille and put a Type R front lip on the Accord. Uh, I can't remember. I don't know if... I think eventually I got some glass one-piece headlights for this thing, but I don't think they're there in that picture. Uh, this thing was pretty slammed. Uh, you can see I'm almost tucking lip uh, of the VSXX. Uh, in the back, this is before I lowered it, definitely before I lowered it, uh, but it's another picture of the VSXX is very, 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 very good looking wheel, especially uh, with the gold faces on a white car. Um, eventually, I sold the 350Z, uh, actually, I traded the 350Z straight across for this 04 Audi S4. This thing actually had, let's see. Uh, traded the Z for an Audi S4. This thing had 35,000 miles on it. It was fucking mint. I mean, you could eat off the engine bay on this thing. Um, I don't know. I think I got it from the original owner who had had it for over 10 years. Uh, it was, oh, yeah, 04 Audi S4. It had the 4.2 liter V8. God, I think it's a 4.2 liter, but it was, this one was straight piped. Um, meaning I wasn't going to be able to get it past emissions. Uh, without like adjusting the exhaust or doing something to the exhaust or doing something illegal to pass emissions because this was at the point where cars in uh, Washington still had to go through emissions. Uh, but I ended up selling this car, an 04 Audi S4, black leather interior, 4.2 liter V8, uh, low, low, low mileage. I sold this car for $7,000 cash to I think a high schooler that was looking for his first car and had some money saved up. And uh, he came and gave me seven grand for this car, 
which is pretty ridiculous because I was in it, I think, less than three. Because, yeah, I bought the 350Z for less than three and then traded it straight across for this. So I more than doubled my money on that deal. And then the Aristo. The Aristo. Probably my first real love, the first car where I I felt like a piece of me was embodied in this car. Uh, I bought it bone stock up in Bremerton, actually, from... This is such a small world. I bought this car from one of the people that I sponsor now, Wyatt Thompson, uh, or Crispy Cookie on Instagram. I bought this car from him up in Bremerton. It was, I think, yeah, this was my first right-hand drive chassis. It was the JZS-147. JZS it was an automatic, naturally aspirated 2JZ GE, so the non-turbo 2J. Uh, it was still a good motor. I mean, this is the... The 2J came in basically all of the Lexuses, the IS 300s, the the GS 300s, the Aristos, the the SE 300s. Um, actually, it also came in the Toyota Supra, uh, the type. No, no, what are those called? The the, the SZs, the Super the Super RZ, the SZ. Anyway, one of the Supras came with the NA 2J in it. But obviously the the Aristo and the Supra came with the the 2JZ GTE G, 2JZ GTE the turbo version of the 2JZ, which made more power than God. Here's a picture of uh, me cruising in the Aristo while it was still stock. Uh, you can see that it's I bought the car completely bone stock. Uh, it didn't need anything. I think the only thing it needed was a rear. Yeah, the driver's side rear window window regulator. You can see that this window is taped up, taped to the chassis so it didn't fall down. Um, but I daily drove the Aristo in the stock form for, I think, three months while I was working at O'Reilly's. Uh, you can see one of my regular drivers drove one of the first R33s to be legal in the state of Washington. Uh, this thing was a pretty fucking fun car. But yeah, I had the Aristo. Uh, it was still stock height, and I threw some BBS LM reps on it, which are what those wheels are. Um, it was a good-looking car. It was still my daily driver. I drove it throughout the winter, stock height. And then once spring rolled around, I put it on the ground. Actually, you may think that this picture looks low. Well, look at the fender gap in the rear. I, w I wasn't exactly having that, so... I put it on the ground. Now this picture may look like the car's bagged. It may look like it's on some air ride. It may look like I'd be able to push the button and the car goes psh and puts it on the ground. But no, I drove it like this. Um, on the ground, tucking 18s. Uh, it was a fun car. It didn't go fast. Definitely didn't go fast, but it looked good while doing it. Uh, I ended up getting some limo tents. At street designs. Actually, if this is a good advertisement, if you want to get your window tinted, windows tinted and you are in the Puyallup area, definitely check out Street Designs. You can see their phone number right above me there. They did a fan fucking tastic job on the uh, tint on the Aristo for me. And they've done multiple, multiple cars for me since then. So definitely hit up Street Designs in Puyallup if you're looking to get your windows tinted. Um, eventually I bought a set of 18 by 10 and a half Adohan. Oh God, I don't even remember what these Adohans are called. These are obviously reps. They're fake wheels, uh, but they looked good. So I went ahead and bought them. Uh, I tinted the front headlights yellow because I'm a fucking thug. Um, oh, this picture is also cool because you can see that the... Uh, wow, one of my lights just died. If it just got a little bit darker means it's probably about at the hour mark and no one's walked past that uh that light in about an hour so i'm sorry if it got a little bit darker but we're gonna keep going because this oh my god it's getting much much darker give me give me two seconds here i am back I am back. Okay. Let there be light. We're back. Okay. So yeah, I was right. We're exactly an hour in. So congratulations to all of us. 
Uh, where was I? Okay, the, the car was tinted, it was on some wheels, it was on some fake wheels, it was on some auto hands, but look at that thing. I mean, look at it. It looked fucking good. This was, this was a good, uh, oh, this was a, this was a good daily driver height. I mean, it's not slammed on the ground, but it's definitely low enough that it was functionable while still looking good. Uh, I think this was the last iteration of the Aristo that I had. I think I drove it for about a year before I got into another S chassis. Surprise, surprise. I'm bouncing between big body Lexuses and S chassis probably for the rest of my life, but uh, it's probably the theme of this episode. Uh, this is my first SIL 80. Uh, this is a, actually, I don't think it's considered a SIL 80 since it's a USDM model. Uh, this is my 240SX hatch with a Sylvia front end on it. Uh, this car, I ended up trading. Let's see. Uh, so I bought the Aristo for 6,800 bucks. Uh, and then I ended up building it. I ended up being in that car a little bit over eight grand. And then I traded the Aristo for this 240SX and 3,700 bucks cash. Uh, so this guy, I don't remember his name. Oh God. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, but he gave me almost four grand and this 240 for the Aristo. He was super stoked to be in a right hand drive chassis for the first time. And I was stoked to be in another 240 and have an, a good amount of cash in my pocket. Um, so I took some of that cash and I put it into a, a savings account and I, I basically stuffed it away for a rainy day and, uh, drove this 240 for a while. Uh, you can see it's got the triple projectors, but it's got an ugly front grille and the, the headlights are cracked and the bumper's all fucked up and it's on some Workmeister S1 reps. I don't know how every car I own ended up on reps, but uh, I eventually took that car and stripped it down. I put a, a KBD rear bumper on it, uh, some kind of side skirts. I think I got those side skirts from one of my uh, customers at O'Reilly's who I paid $20 cash for. Um, he brought them to me at, at O'Reilly's and I ended up throwing them in the back of the 240 after handing him 20 bucks. So that was a fun deal. Um, but I got the battle arrow wing on there. I think eventually, yeah, I put a, a front lip on there. This is this front lip uh, is another front lip off of a 240SX pig nose bumper, which is an OEM bumper from the 1989-1990 240SX, the USDM model. Uh, so I took the front lip off of the pig nose and threw it on the Sylvia bumper because obviously the, bu the bumpers are uh, different from the Sylvia to the 240SX. Uh, so this has the Sylvia front bumper on it with the 240SX lip. Uh, I tinted the headlights yellow because that's kind of a trademark at this point, uh, painted it up a little bit, um, on the interior, I swapped around some, uh, yeah, you can see I got an R32 GTR front seat in there. Uh, I've got a Momo or not a Momo, a, uh, some kind of personal steering wheel in there, some garage moon power, uh, garage moon power floor mats. Jesus, I can't think. Um, and then here's me posted up with the uh, Sil Silady and the Mustang uh, right before I think I sold the, the Silady. Uh, actually, this is right before. Oh, actually, this is fun. Uh, the day after. So you can see that in the previous pictures, I traded the uh, the Workmeister S1 reps for these these because this car was still four lug. So the. The options for wheels definitely wasn't the, the widest array, and I didn't want to spend too much money five lug swapping this car because I knew that it wasn't going to be my forever chassis. This one was a little bit more rough than previous ones, uh, obviously because it had a front end swap done to it. It was a full OEM front end swap, um, meaning all of the body panels were from an actual S, or a Sylvia chassis. It was all made out of metal. It was all made by Nissan. Um, because there are a lot of kits that you can buy online that are made out of fiberglass to fit onto these cars. But this car was just kind of pieced together. Um, and I eventually traded those wheels, uh, the clutch wheels for, I don't remember what these ones were called, but they looked way better. Uh, the day that I traded these wheels or the clutch wheels for these wheels, 
Uh, I took my girlfriend drifting, uh, actually like a mile away from where we're sitting right now. And you can see right here, right where, uh, the driver's a, the, the a, the a pillar, uh, meets right where the fender meets. Uh, we were drifting and I was manging and, uh, it was raining and, uh, I, ha I guess I wasn't used to these tires or what I'm going to make 10 times. Okay, it was raining. I wasn't used to the tires. A deer jumped in front of the road and uh, I sneezed. So there's plenty of excuses. But I ended up crashing the car into a telephone pole with my girlfriend in the passenger seat. Uh, I whipped it hard and uh, we hit right there. The car jumped up in the air. I remember the, the, the driver's side of the car was floating for a second after I hit the pole. But uh, yeah, we walked away fine. And uh, oh, I don't know if you guys saw that, but... I ended up trading this car straight across after I uh, after I crashed it and basically totaled it uh, for this car. And if you don't recognize this car, don't worry, not a lot of people do, because this was the only picture that was posted up on OfferUp. Uh, it looks like just about any other big body Toyota shitbox on some big 20 inch chromies, but this one was a little different. If you look closely, you can see that the wheel's actually on the wrong side. And that was because this one was a JZX81 Mark II chaser. Um, this was a right-hand drive, one JZ, non-VVTI, twin turbo, fucking rocket. This was posted on OfferUp, trade for 240SX. I think it was, I think the only things that the ad said were, Toyota trade for 240SX, or I think maybe even it, it even said Cressida, or maybe it just said trade for 240SX, but this thing was hidden, absolutely hidden. Uh, so I hit this guy up and I traded this totaled, totaled, totaled piece of shit 240 for this twin turbo right hand drive JZX81 chaser, uh, which let's see how many miles did that thing have on it? 32,000. It had 32,000 miles on it. Uh, it was a very, very, very low miles JZX81 uh, Mark II chaser. Um, it it was automatic. I don't want you guys to think that uh, I was driving around. I mean, if this car was manual, I absolutely would have never sold it because a factory manual JZX81, this would probably be a fifteen dollars to $20,000 car at this point. Uh, but I ended up selling it, I think for 7,500 bucks cash. Uh, this car, so you, when I bought it, you can see it was on some ugly, ugly chrome. I, th I think they were actually work wheels once I got them off and looked at the stamp on the back of them. They were some, uh, work Brasirias, Brasiria, I think, something like that. No, Wed's Brasirias. It was, there was some kind of real, real wheel, real wheel. God damn, it's hard to say real wheel. Uh, but I ended up just taking those off and basically throwing them in the ocean uh, because they were garbage. And uh, I took the stock wheels off of the Toyota Aristo that uh, I wasn't using. They were just laying around and uh, threw the Aristo wheels on the JZX81 and uh, it didn't look too bad. Uh, I drove it around like that for a while uh, before I ended up getting some Motegis for it. These were some black 17-inch Motegis that... I mean, they, they, they didn't look the best, but they, they definitely looked all right. Uh, as you can see from this picture, the car was in all right condition. Uh, it had some, not rust, just some fading around all of the, the fender the fender wells. It was just, it was just a weird car. Uh, that's why it, it didn't pull too much of a premium. Uh, I, yeah, I sold that one for 7500 bucks cash, which... I definitely made a lot of money. I, from the seventy five hundred bucks cash and the the money I stowed away from uh, trading the Aristo for the two forty plus almost four grand, I had over ten thousand dollars saved up, and I was twenty years old. So I bought a ticket to Japan. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but uh, I spent over a month in Japan in two thousand eighteen with. Uh, my girlfriend, uh, I flew her out to spend my 19th birthday with me in Japan, uh, but I 
flew myself out and spent 31 or 32 days in Japan uh, taking pictures of drift cars, talking to drifters, going to tracks, going to speed shops, going to Yashio factory and uh, building a relationship with Sam and Okachan over there. This is a picture of uh, Sam's R33.4 at uh, Daikukofuto, da, Daikukofuto, Daikukofuto, which is a, uh, a parking lot in Japan that is famous for housing a bunch of drift cars and a bunch of modified Japanese cars. Daikokufuto. Daikokufuto. Um, I took two years of Japanese in high school and it's all gone. Uh, so I apologize if I ever try to speak any Japanese and I butcher it. But next episode, we will probably go deeper into my relationship with uh, a couple of the YouTubers that I grew up knowing and uh, a couple of the people that I met while I was in Japan. And we'll probably go over the whole Japan trip eventually in an upcoming episode. Uh, but yeah, I think that does it for this episode. Oh, I did also want to mention uh, this car, the JZX81, that eventually put me in Japan and put my girlfriend in Japan. Um, I'm very thankful for the person who ended up buying this car. Uh, his name was Jordan. Uh, he lived pretty locally to me. But Jordan eventually sold this JZX81 to one of my buddies, uh, who I'm friends with now, called named Luke. Uh, Farside underscore Luke on Instagram, I believe. He has completely transformed this car. I definitely recommend going and following Farside underscore Luke on Instagram. He has put a full body kit and some uh, some amazing, amazing parts onto, onto this car. Um, I'm trying to think what wheels he has on it right now, but he switches the wheels up, I, I think, every other month. Um, I think he's got some chrome work T7Rs on it right now and a full body kit, some blast pipes. He five speed swapped it. I think he's eventually going to put a big single turbo on it, but the thing's a fucking rocket ship. So if you want to see that car now, definitely go back and uh, follow him on Instagram. Um, that's all of the, uh, the photos I have for this episode. We'll end it here on uh, Samet's R33. Uh, Thank you for watching this episode. I hope both cameras are still recording, and I hope the rain wasn't too loud for you guys. Uh, I'll see you all in the next episode. Definitely make sure to follow us on all of our social medias and to follow us on YouTube uh, at DLZONWLZ everywhere and uh, DLZONWLZ.com for all of our accessories and merchandise. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I close my eyes